everyone and uh, hello uh, Mrs. Rana uh, Anibari. Uh, we are very happy here in, in KPMG um, um, to invite you and uh, for giving us the time uh, to participate in our Global Leadership Outlook female leadership outlook. Uh, this is our first year to participate uh, in the survey in great reports. Um, and we are happy to have you as one of the participants as one of the um, uh, leaders, female and women leaders here in Kuwait. So thank you so much for accepting the invitation. Um, and uh, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Jamila Dekani, and I'm a senior sales and marketing associate here uh, in KPMG in Kuwait. Um, Mrs. Ranab, before we start talking about the sustainability and your role in the scientific center as a managing director, just talk to us a little about your journey from the industrial engineer uh, to sustainability development champion in the scientific center. Thanks, Jamila. I'm, I'm really happy to be here and do this uh, uh, and for this occasion. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, women empowerment and um, as an important topic. Uh, to start with, I'll introduce myself very briefly. Um, but basically, what, when you say uh, industrial engineer, I think that that's what I studied, but not really practiced. Yes. So my journey took me through what um, I saw at that time as um, uh, uh, spaces that would allow me to grow. And um, it was initially in a bank. Uh, banks at that time had very aggressive training opportunities for everyone, which attracted me to the job at that time. I was able to progress uh, during that early career move. Um, followed by uh, uh, joining Global Investment House for a period of eight years, mm -hmm. where, um, again, it was a space where I saw myself grow. Um, it was a space where um, there were a lot of equality. The leader was a woman, a very powerful one. And I think that a lot was gained during that journey. Um, following which um, I saw myself um, in the realm of a nonprofit, giving back to society, working with youth, uh, talking about the things that we saw in our day-to-day -day job. And uh, mm -hmm. I felt that it was a space where I wanted to add value. Um, during that period of my life, I think that what touched me was uh, seeing students, male and female in schools and seeing um, and being able to see what their mindset was as they uh, were students and when you talk to them about where do you see yourself five, 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. um, the responses were not great, unfortunately, not always. But I yeah. feel that through the programs that we did as in JAWS, we were able to empower um, a certain percentage of, of them. And that was a, a light bulb moment that uh, when we talk about today, mentorship for women or mentorship across the board for professionalism, I think it's a very powerful tool. Um, so I was privy to that. Um, today, I'm speaking to you as the managing director of um, a science institution, a very well-known one in Kuwait, uh, mm -hmm. the Scientific Center. Uh, today, the Scientific Center stands for um, many of the things that we see listed in today's uh, Kuwait uh, sustainability plans and vision for 2030. Reason being is that we talk about, uh, you know, job creation, we talk about embracing STEM education, we talk about inclusion. Uh, mm -hmm. That includes women, it includes um, all forms of society. And when we build uh, for, uh, in, in the mindset of inclusion, it really takes us through the whole spectrum of how do you empower um, society around you to be able yeah. to give and to be able to do uh, and reach their potential. Yes. Um, yes. Science is the future mm -hmm. um, and scientific thinking is the way forward. Mm -hmm. And I just, uh, Jamila, I hope yes. I've, I've answered your question. Yes, yes, of course, yes. Yes, you've, you've answered and it seems like it's a very fruitful journey uh, from 
you're studying industrial engineering until uh, now reaching to uh, being a managing director in the scientific center. Um, just um, as we discussed maybe before this call, we discussed about the vision of 2030, and you just mentioned it in your answer as well, is the vision about um, um, sustainable living environment here in Kuwait. And, and being in this role in the scientific center, just how do you plan to achieve this goal? So, uh, Jamila, it's a, not only is it an important question, it's a very challenging question, really. Yes. I think that the challenge is that you're talking about an economy that's based on um, oil exportation. Um, mm. So today, every organization is struggling to when they speak about sustainability. Um, reason being is that um, we are envisioning a future that is today not really transposed I say that because we're at the verge of what other countries all over the world have been able to accomplish in terms of sustainability. Yes. However, when I started my journey in the scientific center, I thought that it was a perfect ground for us to start talking and discussing sustainability in many mm -hmm. different aspects. Mm -hmm. um, science, as you know, is connected to what is today, um, you know, uh, the ideas behind how do you generate energy? Yeah. Taking people through journeys of, are you conscious about, you know, the waste that you leave behind as a human being? Are you able to uh, influence people to have, you know, the behaviors that would create a sustainable future? Mm -hmm. When we talk about sustainability, unfortunately, it's not a one-man show. It takes a community, it takes a country, it takes leadership for us to really uh, uh, become successful in that realm. On a smaller level, I think when we talk about the scientific center, we brought awareness to what is sustainability um, through some of the uh, programs that we do on a daily, daily basis, mm -hmm. uh, engaging with youth, engaging with K to 12 students. We talk about, you know, just uh, simply, first of all, how aware are we? Secondly, mm -hmm. what are the things that we can do to build a sustainable Kuwait? Do we love our country? The answer is usually yes. When you love your country, then you need to do and show uh, certain behaviors that lead us towards sustainability. Um, we talk about uh, today from the perspective of the aquarium, which is one of the largest aquariums in the region with 1.5 million liters of water. Um, so I used to love it journey. when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go through this journey, you're overwhelmed with nature. Yes. And when you when you think about nature, you go outside and you want to see something beautiful. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can, you know, we can survive um, and we can sustain uh, 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 that uh, that future, you know, mm -hmm. talking about what's in the sea and what's uh, what the human, uh, unfortunately, waste management. And, and there we see a lot of initiatives that are about, uh, you know, cleaning the beach. Uh, mm -hmm. While these are great initiatives, there's still a lot of um, things that we still can do and yeah. we could still uh, really push the dial even more. Mm -hmm. um, today, we're, we're also on the verge of a large expansion for the scientific center. Mm -hmm. Within that, we are uh, drawing, you know, our um, perspectives to build a LEED certified uh, uh, building. When I say that, of course, the importance of it is that there's a list of things that you need to have for it to be a sustainable building. Yeah. From the energy perspective, from uh, um, from many aspects, mm -hmm. from the material that's being used, and a lot of technical details that perhaps it's, it's not today's topic, mm -hmm. but it leads uh, organizations towards building with a conscious, uh, yes. Yes. with a conscious in mind. Yeah. I agree. I, I totally agree with you. And I, I think you've already answered one of our questions, the upcoming question of how we can promote um, sustainability here in the organizations in Kuwait and, of course, how the scientific center is doing. So, so let me just jump to the next question, which is related to um, inclusion and, and diversity. So, um, Jimmy, before we move on, um, yeah. if this would target certain mm -hmm. organizations, I think that you know, there are, it's important to understand that LEED is one, one uh, road that could be led. There are several things that each organization can do 
not necessarily on the level of, of uh, elite certified building, but mm -hmm. there are certainly many aspects that today can be done at a much cheaper rate, at a much faster pace. Mm -hmm. This this is um, very insightful for, for us as an organization and, of course, for other organizations here in Kuwait in order to achieve even Kuwait vision in uh, 2030. Uh, and I totally agree with you. So um, moving to um, uh, the human resources and the importance of the human resources and um, the main topic that we are also raising uh, in this report, which is inclusion and diversity. And when we talk about diversity, we are talking about different aspects, but our main uh, focus is also um, the equality and the diversity between male and uh, female um, in the workplace. So in this uh, regard, what steps do you take in order to uh, promote the diversity and inclusion in the scientific center? Um, I think that, uh, you know, Jamila, again, as a science center, we we regard ourselves very highly um, mm -hmm. in terms of inclusion. Uh, in terms of designing, we actually go to the maximum, which is inclusion uh, beyond, um, you know, what we see today. To mm -hmm. include people of the society that are perhaps not given opportunities such as disabilities, um, people with ADHD, people with certain mm -hmm. uh, uh, certain setbacks, but important yeah. uh, contributors to the economy, mm -hmm. which we see that and we would like to engage with. Um, in terms of uh, female presence at the scientific center, I mm -hmm. think that what, what we can see is at, at different at different job uh, uh, different jobs within the center, um, female are encouraged to take on these kinds of jobs, um, and I think that today youth are are certainly to an extent blind to what we see internally as people who are you know groomed in uh, in in uh, organizations and perhaps have been in, in other industries that are not so open to receiving, you know, women, um, you know, for several reasons, yes. Uh, yes. be it cultural, be it, you know, uh, stereotypes. Um, I think that the Scientific Center offers uh, uh, an opportunity that's available for female and male equally. We talk about meritocracy, Mm -hmm. And I think that is the language that promotes uh, equally the opportunities for youth um, uh, without without being biased to to any um, any race or any uh, mm -hmm. sex or any of of these things that we see sometimes incumbent in in organizations. Yeah. Uh, secondly, uh, we believe that today we celebrate women in science. That's something that Scientific Center actually celebrates. We yeah, focus on it, we bring in uh, 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 examples from abroad, we highlight journeys of uh, females within the organization that are, that are in science. Unfortunately, statistics all over the world deem it very low. Um, so we fall mm -hmm. under that. And I think that there's a lot of work that needs to be done mm -hmm. um, and we're willing to do that work. Um, so it's my belief that today Scientific Center is, um, uh, uh, has created a, a, an atmosphere that is uh, welcoming to a female. Um, again, being myself a female, I am happy to see you know, youth actually go through a journey in their career where they see themselves you know, progressing and, and developing and um, uh, enjoying their journey, as we say, because again, I think or in, mm -hmm. in English, the, um, the, the uh, area that we work in is actually, you know, full of, full of um, uh, satisfaction, right? Um, yeah. So we consider ourselves a little bit, you know, special in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, I'll tell you a little story, uh, Jamila. Yes, uh, A few months ago, mm -hmm. um, one of one of our most um, uh, outspoken, bubbly female, um, young female uh, colleague came into my office, and she's like, "Thank you." 
I took it and I was like, mm, thank you for what. And she's like, today I had an amazing work day. I, I went and we were filming, um, you know, uh, uh, a part of uh, a, a huge program that talks about environment. And this is exactly where I want to be. And this is exactly where, you know, I saw myself. So thank you so much. And my response to her was, you know, first of all, I'm, I'm happy and I love that energy. Who wouldn't? As a leader, um, you want to see that people are giving back and they're giving back not because it's their job, but because giving back because, you know, they're in the right place at the right time. And they have that energy and they have that will, you know, to lead. And these are the things that in the end we need to harbor. Um, so I keep an eye, um, I guess, um, and make sure that people have an opportunity to speak out um, if it's not their case. Yeah. And it's, it's a very nice story, actually. And, and thank you so much also for um, bringing up the topic of, of the challenges that women are facing, maybe um, based on the society or based on the stereotype. And, and, and coming from the stereotype concept, I think even this year in the Women's Day on March 8, uh, the theme, the, word, the global uh, theme was about choose to challenge. And the challenge was mainly challenging the stereotype that the world or most of the people they have about women in the workplace and, and even in the society. So um, so that was actually my, my second question, which is um, what does the scientific center do in order to promote their women, in order to promote um, the women in science mainly? Because when we are talking about scientific center, of course, we are talking about science. So what the scientific uh, center do here in Kuwait in order to promote women in science? Um, what what we do, and I, I, I honestly believe, Jamila, before answering your questions, that there's so much more that we can do. Yeah. Um, but today, what the scientific center does, and maybe I, I spoke about it earlier, is, yeah. you know, let's take a moment and, and recognize uh, women in science. Mm -hmm. Let's take a moment and promote uh, women in science to the younger age group. Uh, we're, we're, we usually on a regular year and not a corona year, unfortunately, we get about 120,000 students from schools coming to visit the scientific center. Yeah. So through that, um, uh, there's no, we break, we're able to break down any stereotyping. They see uh, two characters when they come into the center and it's a character of a, an explorer and that explorer happens to be one of scientific centers a sort of mascot and a female mascot in science. Mm. And from there, they see that, you know, I can be him or I can be her. Um, so I think that that's, that's, that's important. And that also um, goes back to how we perceive our own selves and how we measure our own selves. Mm -hmm. So by doing these, these little things, I think it promotes women in science. Mm -hmm. When we talk about promoting women, I think that one of the challenges that we see women go through is when women go through the childbearing age. And that's when they're, it's a struggle if they continue their education, if they struggle, if they continue their career, or they take a step back and concentrate on building their family. Yeah. I think what's, yeah. what's important and, and from yeah, any part of my reading is that um, organizations need to support women coming back to the workforce and not making it look like you've, you need to make them pay for the years that they've lost. Mm -hmm. um, so I think having that open door where, mm -hmm. you know, just by saying, you know, if you need to take a couple of years, go do that. Yeah. When you come back, we're more than happy to receive you. And all of that will be measured by meritocracy again. The concentration is, you know, um, it's about equ equally giving opportunities equally to people. Um, and, and understanding that today, not everyone has, uh, you know, um, the opportunity to, you know, go through their career without any interruption. I've seen it being, I've seen it happening to uh, even, you know, men who've taken a step back to take care of elderly uh, parents. And I've seen it in females wanting to build their, um, you know, their families. So again, just having a knowledge and an understanding of what people go through. I think, again, you know, dealing with people, knowing that millennials are come from a very different, you know, mentality and how they look at, you know, today jobs than, 
and you know the previous generations where you would see one person spending 30 years in one place without any interruptions. Mm. I think that we need to accommodate and adjust ourselves to be able to um, uh, uh, just offer the best opportunities for for you know youth around us. Yes, yeah, and and again, yeah, we we totally agree with this uh, vision that you you just brought it up. Um, let's let's move uh, also to one of the uh, most important maybe topics and i'll call it a hot topic around the world which is technology and uh, technology and digital and this is something huge now it's, it's already dominating everything around us so how can technology uh, from your perspective for sure how can technology help in shaping careers of young women in kuwait this is, a, this is a question directed to women. So, uh, and of course, uh, in scientific center, technology is something massive there. It's, it's, a, it's a core of, of maybe uh, the scientific center itself. So from your perspective, how, how you can see the impact, how you can see technology help in shaping the future of the careers for women in Kuwait? Um, I think... Again, uh, you know, uh, as a scientific center, we stand for two core things, environmental mm -hmm. conservation and mm -hmm. STEM teaching. When we talk about STEM, one of the core things is technology. We believe that people who ha are versed in technology will have a better outcome in their career and a better outcome in understanding and interacting with the world of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, our, uh, uh, our own, um, I think, contribution to, and how how we uh, enforce that to women. I think that there isn't an enforcing by say per se. However, um, the way we work is geared towards people who are versatile, who are um, open-minded, uh, in uh, you know uh, um, embracing technology as part of their yeah. their skill sets. Um, we do. Uh, programs um, that, again, when we interact with youth, so one of our latest one was a coding program, mm -hmm. uh, talking about, you know, the edge of technology and um, how about, you know, uh, taking it a step forward and talking about creating content for technology. Mm -hmm. One of the key things to understand is that being, ver being versed in technology, and today what we see as the, on an Arab Arab world standards is the lack of content. Um, so I think that um, it's important to be uh, aware of it and it's important to try to push it in the future. Um, so I don't think I've answered your question directly, Jamila, mm -hmm. but you know, it's something really to think about. So thank you yeah. for posing it this way. It's, it's um, uh, as you mentioned, um, I'm sure there is a connection between you know, people who are versed in technology and women in the workforce. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for this. And and, and I think uh, technology um, has different uh, directions. If you're talking about uh, social media as part of it, um, um, artificial intelligence may be part of, of technology as well. And these areas are, are now like massive. And as I said before, are dominating um, our workplace and maybe our lives. So, um, Thank you so much also for, for giving us the chance to explore this maybe with you. Um, and um, I, I believe that as a scientific center, I believe as you are um, a leadership, a woman leadership leader, I think this is um, one of the areas that um, possibly can be developed and can be uh, brought up. Yeah. yeah. And I think, Jamila, in the end, um, when we... As, as we're developing ourselves and as we're setting ourselves up for, you know, a larger expansion and a larger organization tomorrow, yeah. um, I think that uh, one of the key things to do is to show people that, you know, having certain systems, having a certain technology in place would make their life better. Um, so I think that the adoption then becomes, yes, I want this not mm -hmm. I need it. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I think that we've seen it to an extent, 
-hmm. but again i i think that there's there's way way more to be uh, understood first of all yes um, in that department Yes, indeed, indeed. Um, unfortunately, we are coming to the end of our interview with you. Um, but uh, I would like to thank you again for all the um, um, for the all the information that you've shared with us uh, about your career, uh, about uh, you as a leader woman in in Kuwait here, um, about the scientific center as well, sharing some of the visions, future visions, which is something really uh, important for us and would be really insightful for. For uh, the global leadership, female leadership outlook, uh, 2021. Thank you again, Mrs. Rana. Uh, thank you, Jamila. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. I enjoyed the interview with you, and thank you. Uh, would 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 like to maybe uh, meet very soon, inshallah. And uh, thank you so much for this, and um, thank you for your time. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Jamila. Thank you.